what is up you guys i'm back again with another one bare bones reaction is my channel name i was up browsing the internet and imagine that right and so i come across this uh video it's only three hours been out for three hours and it's it's solving a 50 year old murder cold case 50 years old now that's a long time with today's dna machines all we need is just a little bit of dna and the person's found and it doesn't lie about your dna is your dna you're not going to get the wrong person if you can get dna so without further ado guys love yourself like yourself be nothing but yourself like subscribe to the channel it's highly appreciated without further ado guys let's get right into the video Young high school graduate leaves the Midwest for a carefree life in Hawaii, and she finds a fast food job and a roommate, but that roommate worries that Nancy Anderson isn't cautious enough, that she's too trusting. Well, it turns out that roommate's instincts were right, and just three months after they moved in, Nancy was tragically murdered. This is a case that dates back 50 years, unsolved for decades, and by all accounts had gone cold until now. Honolulu has a pull over tourists and mainlanders who move in to soak up the island life. It's what brought Nancy Anderson from Michigan to this apartment building on Aloha Drive in October 1971. It was here in Unit 704 that just three months later, she was murdered. Honolulu police say she was stabbed 63 separate times and died from hemorrhage due to a stab wound of the heart. The fact that he utilized 63 separate times you know 63 times a lot and if we think about 63 times that's somebody that doesn't give a dang about that person about life in general this person's been walking the street for 50 years and finally got a dna sample and finally put him behind bars sally enough the guy's probably in his 70s not if not even his 80s so he's not going to make it out of jail and he shouldn't make it out of jail it just goes to show you that never give up on a cold case anyways guys let's continue to see what he had to say uh, a sharp a sharp instrument to stab her 63 times his hand there's a high probability his hand slid down off of the handle onto the blade and he probably injured himself. The natural inclination is to take a bath towel or hand towel, whatever's around, and transfer it over to your hand so that you're applying direct pressure like this. Blood was found in the apartment and blood typing technology was available to investigators in 1972. Still, Honolulu detectives never closed the case. In 2003, getting DNA evidence from Anderson's slippers, beach towels, and bath towels, a bedspread, and underwear, still no match for years. In 2019, Anderson's brother making an appeal. So we're not looking so much for any kind of uh, retribution or anything. We just simply want as much closure as closure can possibly give. Honolulu detectives enlisted Virginia-based Parabon Nanolabs forensic genealogist. And when we go to when we go to Honolulu, Hawaii, whatever you want to call it, we go there for vacation. We don't go there thinking that somebody's capable of stabbing someone 60 times. We don't go there for that. When we go there, we don't think about that. So Whenever I see videos like this, I think to myself, wow, that's a beautiful place. People move there because it's beautiful. She just moved into that apartment is what I'm getting at. And she got stabbed 60 times. That, that's insane. You know, I wonder what runs through somebody's mind that could actually do that to a person. You know. The question's been asked by people of murderers. Look at Charles Manson, for instance. They tried to get in his mind and they just couldn't because he was crazy. So that's what it is, is just being point blank crazy and insane. They say that they got to feel something whenever they do that. 
to keep going. That's make, what makes a serial killer at that point is they feel the urge to do it again and again and again. It's an addiction. That's what they say that they feel at that point in time. That's the reason why a serial killer goes on and kills different people. So it makes you wonder if this person that stabbed this girl hasn't killed someone else. It's crazy to think about, but it's true. Look at the B2K killer. He said he enjoyed it. He said he didn't like prostitutes. That's what he said. And he went on to kill because he said he wanted the rush of that feeling. So people that somebody who is capable of stabbing someone 60 times. It just makes you wonder if he's committed this crime once before. That's all. Anyways, guys, let's continue with the video. To use what's called phenotyping to put out this sketch based on the DNA taken from those items. A year later, results. This man, Tudor Charila Jr., living in Reno, Nevada, was placed under arrest. Charila had lived less than three miles away from Nancy on Aloha Drive and worked as a graduate assistant at the University of Hawaii. He had built a life becoming a deputy attorney general in Nevada, even running for state Supreme Court, until police got a DNA sample from his son. People that have committed crimes like this that have left. That is crazy. So he was in with the state. So that's how he hid something for so long because he knew what to do. He knew what they was going to look for in the 70s. That's the reason why he can't get away with it now because we have too much equipment for people like this that we can catch at that time. DNA samples, they don't lie. They just don't. What is it like 99.9% accurate? That's what it is. So this guy is probably in his 70s, 80s maybe. It was in 72. So he's in his 80s. So this guy's not going to make it out of jail. It's crazy to think about that we actually have people out there like this that can be in higher power and get away with it for 50 years. That's crazy. Anyways, guys, let's finish up the video. Some piece of them, that, that biological essence behind, they better pray. Cold no more 50 years later and some closure as much as closure can bring for that family. Police say after his DNA was obtained, but before he was arrested, Charila tried to commit suicide. He is expected to survive and right now he's being held in jail without bond. Thank you for watching. Go to. That is crazy. I mean, why wouldn't th the thing about it is, is this guy got away for 50 years, 50 years. The girl moved in in the 70s, 71. He lived right down the road. So what was left out is what was the relationship between these two people? Did he just break in and just decide he was just going to kill her? Because if that's the case, he's done it before. That's what the point I'm getting at with this video, of course. They didn't even say whether he was, you know, dating her at the time, what he was to her. So that tells me that if he was nothing or he killed, way he killed her, he's probably killed before. That's how serial killers start off. That's how a killer starts off to be a serial killer. That feeling. Anyways, guys, love yourself, like yourself, be nothing but yourself. Like, subscribe to the channel. It's highly appreciated, guys. Sleep the Creek Squad, guys. I am out, guys. YouTube family. Your boy Deuce is out. Love you guys.